Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to, or well, I guess whatever time it is for you out there. Welcome to Mind's Eye Visual Guitar Methods here back for another um, somewhat eye-opening, I guess, lesson. Uh, in today's lesson, maybe perhaps not so much something that is going to get you all across your fretboard, but perhaps um, and improvising like we usually do, but something about scales and the relationship scales have, especially scales that you don't hear of too often. What I think happens uh, a lot of times, or at least what happened to me, um, is that when you are, uh, it, as a beginner, a guitar teacher that you might have, might start teaching you something about scales. And because there's so much to learn with scales, there's the, the seven patterns on the fretboard, cumbersome memorization things that they'll give you, and then that can help you understand the modes and then it can understand this and then there's you try to connect them and then the note names and with all that there's so much involved in just getting this major scale understood and then each chord in the scale and the function of each chord and how chord progressions work and how your solo can start working over chord progressions and all that stuff it's easy then to put other scale systems with all these other sonic capabilities that you many of you really hear and go wow that's really far out i want to play guitar like that but here i am you know spending all these almost years perhaps on the major scale and all the great things that you can do i mean think of the millions of great songs that are just created around the the major scale system it's tremendous and excellent uh, to use by itself. But then we can miss out on different um, systems like melodic minor, harmonic minor, and harmonic major. And what um, sometimes is not understood is the close relationship that these scales actually have. Even though they, they turn into a different universe, a different constellation system, on the fretboard, a completely different navigation system that you're going to have to uh, uh, perhaps use to get these some of these understood in a player instrument fashion. But just musically speaking, if you can understand them um, and their simple ways that you can get to um, from you know go from system to system by realizing the simple changes that make up each system. It opens up a lot of possibilities, especially in things like composition, meaning, uh, or what I mean is, uh, you're creating music now. You got a chord, and you got a beat, and you got your DAW like everybody has today. I'm thinking um, more or less. I know a lot of you just got an amp and a, hopefully a looper pedal at least. But um, if you record and you're interested in you know, making things, so this can be very helpful as well. So uh, for all different levels of where people are, um, let's go over the material really quick. So I, in an effort to maybe not waste anybody's time, um, so you can see what, again, what this is going to be all about. We're dealing uh, not with any fretboard patterns here. So that's what's usually on the screen here on my channel. So don't get confused with that. This isn't some kind of weird fretboard thing. These are scales laid out um, horizontally for comparison today. And we're going to discover how um, melodic minor can really fit alongside the uh, major scale system. We're going to get uh, to harmonic minor, harmonic major, and uh, and then compare it to uh, the, some major modes we'll go over, or some major scales, comparing everything. We'll also be comparing everything to minor. This will sound a little confusing right now, but just kind of a brief overview uh, of everything. So um, here I have some modes of the harmonic major that we'll discuss uh, for a little bit of an eye-opener. And so uh, that'll be it um, today. Let's uh, roll with this and uh, see some cool things. Now, um, what I'm going to try to do is, for the most part, stay out of the weeds of theory because you can tangent on so many subjects on this. I've recorded this lesson about 15 times already, making it too long and too abstract. So I'm going to try to do this with 
as little tangenting on theory as possible, perhaps skipping over some things for some new people or losing you. But if you get lost, that's where you uh, ask a question and populate this comments section with some av activity. Um, you know, ask some questions. Don't uh, worry about uh, what you ask. I'll try to answer the best that we can. And maybe it uh, spawns a whole great new lesson. Something. Um, uh, all right. So first of all, though, with a little bit of somewhat theory-ish uh, understanding, we would, uh, you should be familiar with all the intervals and what the deal is with these intervals and some of the confusion. Um, but if you do get confused about this stuff or haven't experienced this yet, let me run it uh, really quick to get the, everybody up to speed here. First of all, um, intervals work like pairs. So you get, you get to make an adjustment. When you choose a two, there's a choice of two twos. Two two when you're making a song about trains and you need a two two. Okay, that was sorry. It's really stupid. Um, <laughs> when you got to the threes, you got the choice a choice of two threes. Um, we'll get over what this deal is with the choice of two fours. Your choice to adjust your five in each direction, and then a choice of sixes and the sevens, obviously. So the um, typically the there's a little bit of confusion around uh, this four right here. And um, w also, there's basically a standard that we start with. We're just going to say that we're starting here without any theoretical rhyme or reason. Let's just say we've, out of the 12 tones of our Western system, we've decided that these tones, those choices sound basically harmonious and are, it's going to be our standard plain flavored uh folder scale. I don't know why I said folder. I don't know. I was thinking like a plain vanilla folder. I don't know. Manila. Vanilla. I don't know. Sorry. Anyway, so, you know, um, our uh, standard plain scale. So we've decided that this would be the natural two and moving down would be flattening it or making it a little bit more um, less in mood. This is more of like our standard mood of being um, somewhat um, not sad. We'll put it that way. Anyways, so when you flatten something, when you lower something, it sounds lower. It sounds maybe more uh, sadder in emotion to any degree. And raising things sounds happier or more gets more joyous the more you raise things. So keep that as a loose explanation for how this stuff works. Um. So that being said, uh, here at the four, then our standard choices are as such that the um, we use the raise two, the raise three, but we keep the four where it is and have the option to raise it. The five, um, and keep these in mind as like a big staple, especially in our explanation today, the four is going to be like a real mainstay note. And it's going to, we'll talk more about that. Um, so really quick here to get, get over this uh, to the point. The five many times is going to be used. And when it is used um, and any alterations are happening to the four or to the six, that's when we'll use or you'll see something referred to as a sharp four. Because that means you're not playing this four, you're playing this four. Um, sometimes you'll see the same note listed as a flat five. How come? Because the four is still there. The scale probably has a three a two a three and a four and then the five is being altered down it's now a flat five so it's just a really a way of keeping the numbers um making sense you know uh in order so um same with the six here if we're adjusting the five it's a sharp five if we're making an alteration to the six it's a flatted six it's pretty much as simple as that and then we can flatten the seven. So moving on with that understanding, let's get into this meat and potatoes of this. So we got this major scale. Oh, but I am also going to talk about these scales in a certain way. We, uh, to help the discussion here, I want to discuss scales as a front end and a back end. What do I mean? In the front end of a scale, we're going to have these two choices to mess with, the two and the three. So root two, three are the front end of a scale. The four being this, you know, kind of 
uh, main beam in the center here of our construction, this um, is going to basically still be part of part uh, the back end of the scale, 4, 5, 6, and 7. But most of the alterations will be with the 5, 6, and 7. Um, so that being said, uh, front end and back end of the scale, let's visualize that really quick here. And you're, we're also going to want to know um, some patterns that are going to make things easy. As you can see, we're starting with the major, and the screen I just clicked off from really fast. I'll get back to that, so don't worry. Um, major pattern. So as you can see here from the top of the bottom of the screen, what I'm trying to illustrate here is when I talk about the front end here, um, especially when we're when they're laid out linearly like they, they are on the uh, main page that we're going to discuss, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This is what we're talking about. When I say front end, I'm here. When I say back end, we're here. Okay. So on our fretboard, we want we're going to just use this scale. We just need to hear the differences, and we need a simple scale pattern to understand for our main references of natural major and natural minor. So we're going to use these patterns here that I think any beginner knows already. A great way to grab C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C, and it, uh, we start from C to grab all the uh, whole letters without any sharps or flats, but that sort of doesn't really matter. It was just a tidy way of explaining things. Um, it's very common in music theory explanation. So we have the natural major scale, or I put natural here because um, I like to think of it as, you know, even though people just say major scale and then you say natural minor and it alludes to this whole separate thing that isn't related and is a new understanding and they're, they're together. They are uh, natural major is the basically the uh, the scalar opposite of natural minor. Um, but we've got to skip any going off on a theory tangent there. Let's move on. So, um, uh, and we can see here the, you know, we can colorize this, uh, what's a gray, you know, understood, visualized gray pattern down here. I can under, um, visualize our front end and back end. And then the back end. Sorry. Because you will do what I say when I say back to the front. Do downward, do surfing, you fly man, back to the front. Do, do, do. Oh, sorry, we went off on a Metallica tangent there. None of those either, sorry. Okay, so minor pattern here, more Metallica style pattern, is. So we'll be doing that at the fifth fret. A from A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. That gives us all our whole notes again if we start from here and a nice, easy, memorable pattern that we know. Wow, can't pick, but I'm going to blame the uh, temperatures in here. It's very, very cold. Um, so, here in the studio, ice cold studios, um, we've got uh, a minor pattern here with a front and back end again. The front is going to be to the third, in this case the flat third, so one, two, three, then the four, five, six, seven. Um, the flat at six and the flat at seven become obvious and, uh, ooh, look at my mistake there. Whoa, what on earth just happened there? We got to go here, we got to go here, and go here, and go B7. Because that there, my friends, is a flat at seven. So, um, and then, you know, the there, the one, but not going to color it in. So we get that, and let's go back to our major uh, thing here. So major Ionian is where we are to start with. Now, if we make one change to this major Ionian, what could we do here? Well, let's take our front end first. The back end's got a whole lot of more, you know. Um, and here's another reason. Um, maybe I want to change, like, my... My scale, just a little bit more sad. It's a, maybe I think major's a little too happy, and I want a little more sad, but I kind of want to keep that that back end of major um, and not go fully minor and kind of like a juxtaposition between both scales. Well, here's what I would have. I would have, uh, I would lower the third, and then I would have melodic minor, or what's called, been discovered long before we were born, melodic minor. <laughs> And we can play that instantly on our fretboard because we know our 
uh, we're going to go to our major pattern that we're comparing this to and just see, look in that where all we need to do to get to this melodic minor is drop the third down. So we go back to our visualization here, which I'm thinking you guys already know. Well, there's our three in the, in the uh, blue front end there. So we're going to drop that down. But the rest is going to stay just like the old pattern. And we can instantly hear and have under our fingers melodic minor. Oops, that was major. So I'm just experimenting with the um, taking that lower tone there, and I'm focusing on that. I'm, I'm now starting there. And I've got a mi minor scale notes. So there, that's not usual to the minor scale. Now that's the looking at it the other way that's the uh, from the minor perspective that's the raised note that gives it that weird sound that's m more melodic than natural minor so. and what was that all in C so I can take a C minor and uh, we'll raise the seventh there so oops time we can hear how that is a you know those sounds are just not found in the major scale and it's cool sounding so we got this mysterious front end with a playful back end kind of deal. You know, and it, it also this front end back end to me really helps me start hearing in the actual in actuality what this soundscape, you know, where it's coming from, what's really making this thing tick. So, okay, let's move on from there. And so melodic minor fitting in there really cool as like the very first change just got to change one note from major there you go we can well you can also look at this from a minor uh, compare it to a minor scale and we'll probably do that a little later so let's move on here um, but we're using kind of everything coming from this major scale at the moment because then we have all the modes so uh, this is hard not to go on a tangent here but um, you know people get so confused over like well, how is that a mode and that's not a mode? How do you guys know all this stuff? Like how, you know, it, it seems so braille and weird, but it's really, it's just you're not looking at this pattern close enough for a beginner. And it's all about calling this movement right here from the root to the two or the two to the three where you skip a note, that is a whole step. Where you don't skip a note, that's a half step. So now let's count. From the root, we have a whole step and a whole step on our front end. On our back end, we have a whole step, a whole step, and a whole step. Our front and back ends are both connected with a half step. So we have this pattern of two whole steps and three whole steps. Now, if you look at these ones that are considered modes down here, Dorian, Aeolian, Phrygian, Locrian, they have, even though it's juggled around, they're built from the same structure. You can see there's one, two, three whole steps and then one and two whole steps hiding over here in a new front end the front end and back end are have just moved around on the screen but it's the same thing it's almost as like this is on a circle and we're just spinning the wheels here this way or this way whatever so you know like on a horizontal disc anyway sorry i'm using my hands here and you guys can't even see my hands um anyway so uh, I'm assuming that you guys get that, as I never do, and I always keep talking. Um, 
those are, that's why those are modes. If we look at melodic minor here, we can clearly see that there's one, two, three, four whole steps in conjunction, you know, meaning glued together with a half step to this other section of one half step. So we have a ratio here in the modal, in the major scale, which is the mode. So in this uh, major uh, setup here, we have this two to three ratio. In melodic minor, we have a one to four ratio, right? Okay. So um, that's why there's, you know, this, these are in, uh, all in like Flynn and melodic minor is considered a separate scale. Um, also people might not be beginners might not connect that because of this similarity that I'm talking about here. What's the big deal? It's all the same pattern on the fretboard until you change that ratio into a new system like melodic minor. And then you get those different the different shape and geometry system that you would use to navigate that up and down the fretboard. But um, not too hard when you just can, can reference another scale and move a note down to get to the new pattern. Uh, some people have a good time doing that. Other people visualize new patterns, all kinds of ways. Um, and whatever little tricks, there might be visual tricks to get through that pattern, which is always possible. Now let's talk about um, positioning, or I mean like emotional, um, where do things sit like as far as brightness to darkness, and is there a scale that sits in the middle here? Well, if we, now that we're kind of all, we're talking about minor here today because we're eventually, we're going to melodic minor, we're showing you the similarities of harmonic minor and then harmonic major. So for the most part, we're talking about minor scales, so... Let's get major out of the picture there. And now we just have this thing with melodic minor, Dorian, Aeolian, Phrygian, Locrian. Really quick, if you are just talking about the modes, you, if you listen to any of my lessons about modes or most everyone's lessons about modes, they're going to, when they're talking about the minor modes, they'll say Dorian is brighter, Phrygian is darker. And we'll see that laid out here in the intervals. Um, just, just, you know, rolling with that. Dorian is lighter, Phrygian is darker, Aeolian is like the, the middle scale of between lighter and darker. Just the same way, the natural minor that or the natural sorry major that we use that we just talked about, the C major scale, um, or any major scale, is um, in between lighter Lydian and darker Mixolydian. So Aeolian is in the middle. Now, Many times people will also uninclude Locri in the seventh mode because, well, it's just the odd man out. And um, for the reason it's so strongly dissonant or whatever, it's kind of hard to make music with. It tends to lead back into the major scale. Um, it's, so it, there's a whole lot of reasons there. It's usually not included. But when you do include it and kind of see that um, it's all about um, changing one tone, two tones, three tones, four tones, and then changing all five tones, there's a progression here. And when you pro have gone progressively to all the tones changed, you're down here at Locri. And when you're up here with only one tone change, you're up here at melodic minor, giving us still an even keel on Aeolian um, if we include the outside scale of melodic minor at the top as a happier than Dorian, um, and then Locrian as a unusual scale that we might not ever use, you know, and also melodic minor, definitely popular in certain genres, and <coughs> jazz, and um, not so popular in uh, your uh, pop and rock and stuff like that, to a degree. So... Let's move on then from there. I've said what I've said. Well, actually, uh, let's actually this is worth a quick look here. Moving down, we've got now um, Dorian adds in what like what would be the next note we could add in? By the way, so now we've got one minor, but we've got the uh, the back end was still decorated um, with a happier major sound. Well, what really um, kind of there's one interval that plugs right in with minor. It's almost like if the third is flattened. 
by minor, I mean that, the flatted third. If the third is flatted, you kind of want to flat this seven. It's going to be like the next least noticeable change that's going to be a little bit more congruent with the um, with the with that flatted third. So in effect, you'll get a, uh, a more congruent, like in our example, in our C major example, there's a flatted third, now C minor it would be, I guess, and a seven, a flatted seven, right? Now here's the major seven. sense with the flat third so there's Dorian right and then you add in one more though because one more kind of also makes sense it turns everything a little bit more serious and that is Aeolian that would be more like it sorry and where's that flat at six how did I know that? Because I know my shape. We're using the, what is commonly taught as the Aeolian shape, even though it only is if you are considering it from this chord. So, okay. Um, Aeolian now are... Uh, flavor of choice. If you take one now, we can also, we have uh, two more notes, we can lower the probably next least obvious one, but still going to be pretty obvious now. It's going to really change, uh, give our flavor this now a darker, whatever you can put some descriptors on there. I'll, I'll spare you. Um, the um, uh, flatted two right there, and uh, that would, you know, be like this. <laughs> scale one two three so i lowered the two and with the lower third there okay, so moving on and uh, my mouse wheel jumps around now so none of this scrolls very uh, pretty for the camera um and then you know for low korean down there we flatted the five let's just kind of move past that um i'm sure you can play the scale no uh how it has its signature hard to process sound um aeolian that also would go with a diminished chord and uh i guess we'll talk about you know really quick pulling chords out of these scales going to be helpful for everything we talk about you skip every other note so here we would have a let's you know minor scales minor chord so the root, the minor, minor third, um, we'll skip the four, go to the five. Okay, sounds pretty normal. There's our flatted seven, and that chord will work for a Phrygian scale or, as you can see here, an Aeolian scale, right? But if you were playing a Locrian scale, that um, the chord that's going to work is going to have a root, a flat third, and a flat five calling giving it that chord name a diminished chord because the five is now diminished so beginners are learning something here um okay the rest of you are policing what i say to make sure or you just already took off from the lesson because <laughs> it's too basic for you um there's stuff you already maybe knew okay aeolian here now our fancy name for the scale we went over is our minor pattern <laughs> And 
And so on our harmon how does harmonic minor come into the picture now? And um, you know, what about when people say, oh, it's like a uh, natural minor with a raised seven? And that sounds like, wow, that's some pretty heavy stuff. How do I get through that? Oh, my gosh. Or because maybe you don't realize it, well, Aeolian is natural minor. So it's, I could have also said it's your minor scale that you already know your... <laughs> scale pattern that you probably know, which is, you know, housed within a pentatonic scale that everyone's trying to break out of. Alright, so we've got a um, Aeolian and this harmonic minor raises that seven. So where would I do in my pattern here? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. I guess I gotta raise that. makes this whole new sonic universe happen that you don't, you know, with things that you don't get in the um, major scale or ma in major and minor scales. And um, sometimes new people will say, well, I don't know. I just heard a bunch of notes. It sounded kind of cool, but, you know, where am I going to use that? How is that really going to make a whole new universe? But you don't get, it's about the chord progressions too, and you don't get anything like this. <laughs> Anyways, um, the way that those two, uh, all right, um, a lot to explain there, but uh, we just got to move on. Um, but cool things like that, you know, a whole structure, a whole new system exists because of that seven. And you want to take note of this, um, the structure here, um, just, there's a lot, uh, to also, uh, comment on this, um, little gap here that occurs in the scale. Um, you can just uh, visually understand it. You can know it's there. This is going to be part of the neat sound of this whole system. And what it creates is kind of like a harmonic black hole right there. Because typically speaking, as I understand it, um, in your most classical traditional music uh, theory, steps in music are going to be either, you know, classically speaking here, should be half steps or whole steps. Anything more is a leap, and you've got son too much sonic material missing in between, uh, as typical, right? Or for the most congruent or harmonious sounding, you know, activity scale-wise, right? And the things that come out of scales. Um, so, but if you do that, nobody's stopping anybody from doing, breaking the rules like that, and that's what it's all about. Um, but these rules are all now, these broken rules are now well understood, so now they're the rules again. But anyways, you have that harmonic black hole right there, which is kind of neat. And um, that can help you and you know, for things like when you're picturing the fretboard or, you know, from things that are going to... things to uh, pop out at us. 
analyzing scales like that. So harmonic minor is one note difference, even though it's quite a few notes difference from the major scale from the minor, natural minor, you can see how it, you know, has some sense. And it's almost like in this case, they kept the front end the same and they changed the back end um, of Aeolian with one change. So now let's create this, uh, let's do um, major to harmonic major. And we're going to see kind of um, maybe what's the reason for this name harmonic in both of these with harmonic major and harmonic minor. They're, maybe they're both harmonic because they contain the very similar sonic black hole, a void in the space of that scale where there can be a final frontier of your music that goes to die because you played the most unpopular scale. No, I'm just kidding. It's not unpopular. <laughs> okay. Um, major Ionian, then, is got the same old, same old front end and back end there. And now, what if we want to just, what if we just flatten the sixth of a major scale? So that would be like, here's our six. We need to flatten that one. So now I'm going to visualize that pattern as kind of half of the top half of the, or front half of the major scale. And then the back half is, and this makes it easier to remember when I'm on the fretboard. Um, even though I might visualize it eventually like using other little square box shapes that get me around, um, this is a great in, in the beginning. So. And then we have that normal raised seven. Once again, it's got a sound to it when you play it as a scale. But that doesn't do it justice if you haven't heard the chords, the melodies that you can create over the chords. That's where the action really is for many times. Um, since we, you know, if you're not recording yourself, you have no way to record yourself, and it's, or no other guitarist to jam some, put some s the specific chords that will come from this arrangement of notes. Um, remember, they all they all create these chord structures that are will be different. Um, you won't really get the full effect of this uh, sound. So it can sound like, oh, harmonic major, throw that one in the garbage. But there may be a good reason to use it some someday at some point, especially remember also just the same way that we discussed how um, the major scale in the beginning and we discovered its modes and the simple way that they work. Remember, all these scales have modes. It's all about just starting on a different point of the scale, but using the same pattern, just starting, making this your focus root tonal gravity center everything is focused here becomes a mode of this harmonic major if you make everything the focus here on the third where the plus sign is then you have um you know the third mode of harmonic major whatever it may be and you can figure all that out it'd be a minor one because there's a minor third and blah 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 but we're not going to go too deep into a theory tangent there ding 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 i should have a little bell now ding whenever i avoid a theory tangent right all right, so um, major, let's move down, I guess. There's probably some more things I wanted to say, but we just got to keep on moving here. Major, melodic minor, harmonic minor compared together. Um, and by the way, so uh, on harmonic major, it's just one note change again. And then notice that similarity here between that, that's this structure here, this half steps, skip a half step, and play another half step. And that's the same with harmonic major and harmonic minor, probably why they're both labeled as harmonic scales. But one is major, one is minor. We'll see that down below in the pink and uh, or purple and yellow here. But major, melodic minor, and harmonic minor together. So if we got a major scale and we just lower the third like we saw earlier, we get the melodic minor. Now if we take that melodic minor and then get the back end of the scale a tweak, and lower the six, which was a nice basic move to get Aeolian, you get this harmonic um, minor scale. I mean, 
I said, you know, oh, like, you know, getting toward a Aeolian. Well, we're stepping in that direction, but you remember we're still keeping the uh, raised sevens, giving it this weird black hole here, creating a harmonic type of scale. Because at that moment, if we had also lowered the seventh, well, we're back to Aeolian that we just described above. Okay, so moving on down the road. It's almost like um, as minors are concerned, you could have put the... Uh, so if we would have lowered that seven and that, well then yeah, well okay, no, never mind. It would have jumped right to uh, keeping those would have jumped right to Aeolian as the next scale, but then would have missed the uh, simple change for Dorian. All right, so um, so it's almost kind of like the changes kind of split in directions. I almost visualize it like this. I don't know if this is worth saying to the audience or not, but there's like a little V in the road here where from melodic minor, you can make a change to get to harmonic minor, or you can make the change, one more change to get to Dorian and flow from there. Because if you were like somehow making something and your idea was to modulate with one note at a time, I don't know why you would do that. And it may have some merit, may may not be worth pursuing. But if you did, making your composition, um, you could theoretically go from melodic minor to harmonic minor, then to Aeolian, making little subtle changes. Or you could go from major to melodic minor to Dorian, making one note changes along the way. That's what I was trying to say. Um, compositional possibilities. That's the point. Let's move on. Um, you know, for whatever they're worth. I don't know. Maybe that's just junk. Um, so, but I doubt it. I'm sure there's some something somewhere where you could say, look, that's exactly what this composer did, or that's what this film movie score probably did, because that's also somewhat common, too. Um, moving on down the road. Um so harmonic major and harmonic minor together. So now we can see t we got these two harmonic systems together. Should have actually just made that more clear. Just That's just bugging me. All right. Let's do that a little better. All right. Maj. So harmonic and maj at the diner. Sorry. That just, um, you got to, hey, uh, so now we got a front end and a back end of the scale, a little different here. Of course, the yellow here is, I guess, we're considering that part of the part of the back end for whatever reason. But anyways, you got these two little splitting the scale helps describe them or help you see the difference pretty easily. Um, basically, this section stays harmonically the same, but you get this pattern here, which is you know so simple. It's basically this versus this. So, you know, one has got the flat third in it, and one's got the major third in it. So one is the harmonic minor with the flat third. One is harmonic major with the major third. You can kind of see the total rhyme and reason there and how you can switch between these two systems by just switching one note. So there's a lot of possibility there for um, borrowed chords, different sonic pathways. Who knows? Um, and so down here, as kind of like a final thing, uh, we take the harmonic major scale, for example, where earlier we joked and said maybe there wasn't any use for it, but, you know, here we are doing what we talked about earlier, um, and I, now it's laid out on the screen where we start, uh, from, make the tonal gravity, we use every note in the scale, like, you know, uh, this is the standard, put your root on this note, but if we put our root on this two here, we've got the scale below. You can see the purple shifted over. Now the first note of our purple section is the first note. The second note of our purple section is now this, the tonal gravity note. See how that works? So four is there. So you can see how this uh, all lines up. And so you would have the harmonic major, and then you have all these modes. Um, these modes they have with these weird names. What do you do with these weird names? Well, you know, just really, if you get, if they make you nervous, just slow down a second and take a good, long, easy read. And all they're saying is exactly what they're, all they mean is exactly what they say. So let's go up one here to Mixolydian flat two. 
Okay, so real quick, think about a mixolydian pattern on your fretboard. It's that same major pattern, and, but instead of the raised seven, we're going to put in a flat seven. So now this is a mixolydian flat two, so that means we've got a flatted two. Oh, I put a flatted three in there, so we got... going to make some interesting weird chords but our basic chord and think about mixolydian scale what's a mixolydian scale in our this is theory you should know um that so that's the scale built off the fifth of our scale and our major scale the five is always that super important dominant seventh chord so the same here that's one of the reason they're Referring to this as mixolydian because it should have as its focus a dominant seventh chord. Let's see if that holds true. Every other note here, please. Root, skipping that odd flat two, we've got the three, a major third. Okay, that's in a dominant seventh chord. We've got a five. Yep, we got our basically our standard major one, three, five. And that flatted seven. Cool. So there's for sure is our mixolydian, our, our five, our flat seven or dominant seventh chord. And with that being said, that means that whenever I get a five chord in my regular major scale composition, maybe I can throw that flat two in there as like, yeah, that does work. So it should, let's hear it. a sound to it that's kind of cool a little surprise versus the that sounds kind of boring actually that too is kind of boring in the normal mixolydian now hey it's got some thing there so there you go that's why all of this stuff is used in and how um and then people might explain well you know Wow, how did he, you know, where does that flat two come from, teacher? And that's like, well, you know, the harmonic major has a mixolydian flat two scale, and that's where, you know, that'll, you know, and you're like, wow, man, how does that guy know all those scales so fast? And that's all you really need to do is understand that this scale exists and has that possibility, and you can just use it, that one note from it when you need it, and theoretically it's oh that was mixolydian flat two from the da -da -da scale you know so i'm trying to show you here how some of these things can seem so intense and and huge but you can really boil this stuff down and feel free to just grab and go with some of these some of this information because this is where that cool stuff is coming from and you can feel free to just grab and use it too if i don't think it sounds good you chuck it and because sometimes these things come back two months later and you're like hey wait a minute that is the sound i'm looking for holy cow so you know um definitely uh a lot of stuff it might just seem trivial or too out there but it's a lot of stuff really cool worth exploring so if you can get a recording of a of a five chord just going over and over then you can experiment with, with you know playing little things that either involve the regular two or the flat two and seeing how they sound and by the way that flat two is a common thing as i understand it very recently in gypsy jazz if you're playing what's known i'm going to go really deep on theory here for people who know and stuck around for the lesson if you're playing a two five one you're going to be playing um if you play that sharp uh, or that flat two over the uh, the five chord there it does sound a little off um, especially you know you gotta really work it in the beat there but it's a way to get you know a note you start on your two with a nice consonant uh, note there the uh, what did that would that would be the uh, five of the one of the two chord sorry which is the first chord of the two five one and you play that sharp note or the, sorry the flat two over the uh, the flatted two over the five chord and then down from there one more step you're into the five of the one chord so a nice little melody line follows 
from the two to the three, uh, giving you another reason to be able to kind of make that flat two allowable over that five chord. And um, if there's a, because there's a logic there, a line that's hidden in your playing that's falling, it sounds kind of cool and hip. And so speaking of cool and hip, we go down here. We see one here. It's listed with a Holdsworth. Well, that's what they said when they um, were teaching this. And I would imagine for sure that you could find this um, as a scale idea or the backbone of an idea of a sound structure in one of Alan Holdsworth's songs, probably for sure. I know that, you know, we couldn't just rely on this and say, hey, I can play like Holdsworth now because that dude knew probably every one of these scales inside, outside, upside down, and you hear his music, it's just another world. We know that. So, but there's some, you know, cool ideas to experiment with. Make that one your root and see how you like these tones and what they can do, especially when you set up your delay like a madman and get that cool sound out of your guitar. All right, so, um, yeah, you know, there's all these other ones. It's got, just got all these other weird sounds that you'll hear in jazz so that's what it's all about um finding the modes of these uh scales you can write them one out linearly then copy and paste if you know how to do this type of thing in excel here maybe i'll do a lesson on that by the way i'll show let me know in the comment section below if you made it this far and you think i should do a lesson on hey how to set up excel for a graph paper it's 10 steps it's very easy and um it's hard to find the lesson on uh on YouTube on how to get it, uh, how to make this page. So then you could write out your scales um, and then cut and paste and move them down and around to, to, you know, have quick access to these modal, these other patterns, or just if you're good at, you know, typing all this in yourself. If that entertains you like it does me, I don't know. Um, so down here, just as a final thing, we've got... Um, in case you wondered about the modes that we left out, the but we did talk about earlier really quick, uh, Ionian, Lydian, and Mixolydian there. How do they, you know, how does the major scale turn into those? And then here we can see handy use of the sharp four, um, where we take the major scale and only alter one note, moving that sharp. You've lightened the load of Ionian and made a lighter scale called. Lydian still is using, even though you shuffled that one note around, it's still using the same pattern of notes. Same thing with Mixolydian here. It's all about lowering that flat 7, which we were actually just talking about there. Could have actually scrolled down and seen that. Um, and then a final, just a final thing that I will say today here, like you'll notice here, maybe you we're looking at this going, what the hell did he write here? It's sharp 2. What's this exclamation point? Well, yeah because that's not very usual there to sharpen the two, but what do you do here when you got that sonic black hole and it goes over your two and then you're playing both threes? It's just crazy. Well, you just keep the numbers the same and even though you're playing a scale with a flat three and a regular three in it, totally mind-blowing, um, you've got that, uh, you, you just might, you know, understand that that's your two. It's just a weird sharp two. And technically not a flat third since it has both of them uh, together in it in its scale. And so it's a Lydian sharp nine sharp five. How come? Well, what's a Lydian scale? Here we are down here. Major is there. And Lydian just raises the four. So anything time that you're seeing, you're hearing Lydian. And that's the only change that makes Ionian Lydian. So when you're hearing someone say Lydian this, Lydian that, Lydian dominant, Lydian whatever, it's a scale with that alteration, the sharp four. Oh, cool. So it's just that simple. Well, then Lydian here should have that sharp four. Bingo. What do you know? It's right there, sharp four. So now it says sharp nine and sharp five. All I see is this weird sharp two here. And oh, yeah. After you pass the seventh note and get to the root, that's number eight, and the twos are the nine. So, um, but you know, they're way up higher in the scale, so they operate more like a nine than a two, perhaps. Um, so, that being said, um, now here we've taken our regular two and we've sharpened our two, so that way there comes the nomenclature of Lydian sharp nine and 
should have a sharp five. There it is. So it's telling us every alteration we need to know to play this scale as referenced from a normal major scale. Um, okay, so, uh, you know, everything the same. Locrian, but it has a natural 2 and a 6 instead of the flatted 2 and the 6 that we discussed above. So you can now, hopefully, you are able to look at this stuff and go, oh my gosh, I can make sense of all of this now. It was so Braille before and with little to no theory tangents, thanks to this guy's thoughtfulness, uh, that today I got it all in probably about 45, 55 minutes, I guess, has gone on because that's how long I usually talk. So thank you for watching. Check out the merchandise below, especially if you're like, oh, my gosh, this was real eye-opening. This guy um, would be great to get a dollar tip, you know. what? <laughs> Anyways, you know, check that. There's a tip jar for that reason down below. Uh, there's a merchandise store, which I think has a bunch of cool shirts I made. And check out the artwork and see what you think. Buy a shirt. Make everything cool. Um, because there are costs incur that I incur to do this every uh to just keep this show running here and nothing is compensated for. And, um, I don't know. Um, maybe it's just a freebie thing that I do. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Hopefully next week, next Sunday on time for another video. And let me know what you want. I've got a whole bunch of ideas about two five ones about, um, making your lines start to sound a little more jazzy. I'm getting uh, some good information. I can relate to you guys and, or, um, uh, some other ways to uh, just look and see, play a chord and go, you know, is this, do I want to make this scale, plug a scale into that chord. Do you want it to be Mixolydian, um, Ionian, how to do that really quick, even though I've done that a million times. Um, there's always a new way to look at it. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody.